All right, back again. Um, let's see. So we've done uh, real distinct roots. Okay. So um, and then now what we're going to do is um, partial fraction expansion for complex distinct roots. Okay, and of course I want to remind you that when I say uh, roots, I'm talking about solely the roots of the denominator um, of your Laplace transform, not the numerator at this time. Okay, so um, okay, so it turns out that um, it it's actually similar to the real distinct, all right? But there's a little trick. All right? I'm just going to say that it can be similar and in fact almost identical to um, to to real distinct okay but it is um, it is better or maybe uh, that's just my opinion but it's better to keep the complex conjugate pairs together. And when I mean better, I mean uh, together. When I mean better, I mean easier, easier to solve, possibly. Okay. So I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you what I mean um, right now. Let's do an example. Okay. And then maybe this this uh, phrase will make more sense. All right. So here's our example. We have some Laplace transform. I'm not going to uh, delve into the, the physical system that I derived this from, but it came from a differential equation and an input, and um, this is what I get. S cubed plus 4S squared plus 6S plus 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and, oh, I don't have MATLAB open, so let me pause for a second and let oh, MATLAB load. Okay, so MATLAB's ready, so what's my denominator? 1, 4, 6, 4. Let's look at that. All right, so let's look at the roots of 1, 4, 6, 4. Okay. So here, here you'll see that I have one real root and, one, and two complex roots. They are distinct but they're complex conjugate pairs, all right? And um, so here's and I'm so now that I know the roots, I'm going to write um, I'm going to write the partial fraction expansion, all right? So this is one way. Now this is not the way we'll use it, but um, but I want to write it. I'm going to write a over s plus two because that's the real one. And then plus b over s plus 1 minus j. That's one of the complex roots. And, and I'm going to call this hat. I'm going to leave it as hat for a second. C hat. Those are just constants. I'm just give, giving it another uh, a hat just to dis make it uh, different from what I'm going to talk about in a second. And s plus um, 1 minus 1, sorry, 1 plus j. Okay. So that's it. Now, we could go through the same method of finding a, b, and c that I talked about in the last video for real distinct roots, okay? But guess what? b and c are going to be complex. They're not going to be real, all right? So, and then you have to do some, uh, some cleanup to get rid of the, to get it into a form that we can look up um, on the Laplace table, all right? So, it seems that it, it's actually probably easier if we combine these two, okay? And what I mean by combine, all right, I'm going to, A over S plus 2 stays the same. And then I'm going to multiply these two complex conjugate pairs. And guess what I'm going to get in the denominator? I'm going to get, if I multiply this one by this one, I'm going to get a real uh, uh, denominator with real coefficients. So I'm going to write B, S plus C all over, and in this case, it's s squared plus 2s 
plus 2. Okay, so, and now you can see that B and C have no hats on it because they're, they're actually real. Okay, all of these residues are going to be real numbers, real constants. Okay, unlike C hat and B hat. Okay, so um, just so that we can deal with real coefficients and not have to mess with complex numbers, um, this turns out, this method turns out to be the better way to go to, um, to deal with complex roots. Okay, and especially, guess what? You see how I, I want you to notice something that is really uh, kind of interesting, and I'm going to talk about that, I'll, I'll write it right here. Um, for real, for real, and I'll put it in quotes, real physical systems or models of real physical systems, um, complex roots always, always come as complex conjugate oops I'm getting always come as complex conjugate pairs so for real okay for real systems you will never have s plus 1 minus j all by itself all right so if I go back to MATLAB and I do read roots I'll never have like two roots one that's real and one that's complex all by itself if you have complex if you have a complex root you always will have a complex conjugate pair to come with it all right so that's important because that always when they multiply by each other you're going to get real uh coefficients here okay down here s squared plus 2s plus 2 all right so maybe you can think about why that is and I'll discuss it uh in class but anyway, it's an interesting. So you can always tell if it's a re, if it really comes from a real physical system when you have uh, complex conjugate pairs. All right. Okay. So let's uh, move on. So we're going to use. So again, let me write it out. We're continuing with this example. F of s equals three s squared plus ten s plus ten all over s cubed plus four s. And in fact, I'm going to rewrite this as s plus 2 times s squared plus 2s plus 2. These are the two complex conjugate pairs in here, so I can't factor out any more than that, otherwise I'll get complex. And that's equal to a over s plus 2 plus bs plus c all over s squared plus 2s plus 2. Now, of course, if I had another, just like if I had another real distinct root, I'd have b over that and c over that and so on. If I have another pair of complex conjugate pairs, then I'll just have plus ds plus e all over you know this pair. All right, so you just you just keep repeating for however many complex conjugate pairs you have. Of course, I'm still talking <clears throat> about distinct. Nothing's repeated yet. All right, we'll talk about that next. Okay, so now the question is, how do we get a, b, and c? Well, guess what? A is easy. A is easy. We first of all we can get a by just multiplying by s plus two x uh, sorry not x we're talking about f f of s and evaluated at s equals minus two that was the same <clears throat> trick we were doing that was method two uh, for finding the residues and that's equal to a because all of this will disappear go to zero and then you have to that's going to be equal to three s squared plus ten s plus ten all over and this gets canceled out so you get s squared plus 2s okay sorry uh, got this distracted by my three-year-old um, alright so where were we okay s squared plus 2s plus 2 and because um, those got canceled out but I've got to evaluate s equals minus 2 alright so now this is just you know the process of you've got 12 um, Let's see, is that right? Let's see, uh, yeah. 12, um, then uh, minus 20, okay? And uh, that gives you minus 8, plus 10 is 2, okay? So 2 over, and then uh, 4 
minus 4 and then 2, so that's equal to 1. All right, so let me see if I have it written down somewhere what A is. A is 1. Okay, so that's, I'm doing, doing all right. Um, so that's A. That's, that was done. Okay. Now the question is, how do you find B and C? Well, we can't, we're not going to do, um, like I said, we want to stay away from complex numbers, so we're not going to multiply by, you know, each root and try to find B. Otherwise, that'd be finding B hat and C hat. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you a new method, all right, and I think that uh, what I'll call this C, um, I think I was calling it A and B, method uh, three, okay, and that is equating coefficients for certain values of S and this is very important, choose s not equal to a root of the denominator, okay? So that's important, otherwise it'll, things will blow up, right? If any, any of these go to zero, things will blow up, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, let's try one, all right? So for example, um, what's a value of s that's not a root? Okay. Well, I know that one of the roots is minus 2 and the other ones are complex conjugate pairs. So I think the most the easiest one to choose is s equals 0. All right? So let's check that out. So let's evaluate evaluate f of s at s equals 0. All right? So let's do that. So you have f of s is equal to 3s squared plus 10s plus 10 all over s cubed plus 4s squared plus 6s plus 4, okay? Now, if you evaluate that at s equals 0, guess what? That just becomes 10 over 4, or 5, 5 over 2, all right? And then, that's equal to a over s plus 2, but s is 0, so a over 2. And I already know what a is. a is 1. So I'll leave it like that. Plus, well, bs plus c over s squared plus 2s plus 2. Well, these go away, okay, because I'm evaluated at s equals 0, and so does this one. So all I get left with is c over 2. All right, well, guess what? I already know that I'm done. I can just solve for c. So c equals multiplied by 2, 5 minus 1. So C is going to be equal to 4. Done. So now I've got C. Now I just need to find B. All right. So now let's evaluate. Let's evaluate F of S again at, well, I think uh, at S equals my, 1 is a good one too. All right. Anything that's not a root. All right. So I get, so if I plug into here, I get 3 plus 10 plus 10 all over 1 plus 4 plus 6 plus 4, which is equal to 23 all over 15, okay? And that's going to be equal to 1 half plus um, BS plus 4 all over, and that's um, S squared plus 2S plus 2, so that's going to be 5, okay? That was 1 plus 2 plus 2 is 5, yeah. Um, okay, so now what I think I will do, let me just double check and make sure um, I got that uh, right. Oh, sorry, that is not going to be 1 half. It's 1 over s plus, it's s plus 2, so that means it's going to be 1 third when s equals 1. Okay, 1 third, there you go. So um, now I'm going to multiply by 15 across just to simplify things. So I get 23 equals 5 plus uh, 3bs. So oh yeah, that's that's a one. Again, that's a one. 3b uh, plus um, 12. Okay. Now I'm going to clean that up, and I know. Sorry, I know. 
B. Do I know B? No, I'm solving for B, sorry. So I'm going to, well, I've got subtract 12, and I get 11, and then subtract 5, and I'm going to get 6, and then if I divide by 3, so I get 6 equals 3B, that means B is equal to 2, and oops, and I've got all of my uh, all of my coefficients. All right. So hopefully that was clear. Or rewatch that little section. So let me rewrite now where we're at. So f of s is now equal to a was one, so one over s plus uh, two plus b was two, so two s plus, and then c was four. All right. And in fact, I'm going to just factor, I'll factor out a 2 later, it's okay right now. Um, and then I'm going to do s squared plus 2s plus 2 was the original. Okay, so there was b, there was c, and there was a. Alright, so we're, we're really close. Now all we have to do is the inverse Laplace. Alright, so inverse Laplace of this whole thing. Well, guess what? This is f of t. Right, inverse Laplace of that is f of t, and this one's really easy to see. It's going to be e to the minus two t. That should be that should start to become obvious. Now the question is, what's over here? All right, that one is not. It, it's not quite obvious yet. All right, um, I'm going to remind you of a few table. Uh, I should say Laplace pairs that you'll find it in either in our notes or in a table. Okay, so I'm going to remind, give you a reminder of these two important properties when you have complex conjugate pairs. You're going to get e to the minus 8t sine of omega t. And we prove this. The Laplace pair is omega over s plus a squared plus omega squared and e to the minus 8t cosine omega t the Laplace pair is going to be s plus a all over s plus a squared plus omega squared. Okay, so here's the thing. We want, if you've got complex conjugate pairs, you want to make it look like this. This, this either, the, the most important thing right now is the denominator and then we'll, we'll play with the numerator in a second. All right. I'm looking for this s plus a constant quantity squared plus another constant squared. All right, and this is not this is not that form. Okay, so we need to play with this to get it into that form. All right, so let's go to the next page, and I'm going to rewrite just that section s two that second uh, part of the Laplace transform, not the not the distinct real part. And I get s squared plus two s plus four. And I want this to look something like uh, s plus a squared plus omega squared. Okay, so here's what I want you to remember: that these roots, the roots s1 and s2, were minus one plus or minus j. Okay, so this is actually um, well, I should say without the my the the this part here is a. All right. So when you when you find your complex conjugate roots, I can quickly write this if I know what a is by looking at this. This is the real part without the negative. And if it was positive, then it would be negative a. So um, so now I'm going to say that this is now equal to. Well, we'll figure this out in a second. Or I'm going to write this as two s plus four all over. And I know that I want s plus 1 quantity squared. All right? So let's see what s plus 1 quantity squared. That is s squared plus 2s plus 1. Right? Well, I need s... Uh, sorry, that's not a 4. That's a squared. Did I do that before? Uh, squared. Okay, 2, I mean. So this is s squared plus 2s plus 1. What do I need to add to get 2s squared plus 2s plus 2? I need to add one, okay? And I can write one squared also, all right? Just so that it's the same one and one squared are the same thing. Now, um, I'm going to 
So now we're really close. So now we got the denominator in that form. This is the trick you'll use for all complex conjugate pairs. Look for this value, that's your A, and then clean up and check what the, um, what the omega is. It should be uh, related um, to the imaginary part. Okay, so we're really close. Because if I go back one, remember, I've, now I've got my A, I've got my omega. So I know I've got A, uh, this is going to be E to the minus T, and I know I'm going to have either a sine or a cosine or, or both of 1T. Okay, the question is, is it sine, is it cosine, is it both? Well, the, you have to look at this and this, all right? And we don't have, we sort of have a combination of those, all right? So let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back here. So I'm going to say that this is, well, I'm going to pull out the 2. So I get s plus 2 all over s plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, all right? Now, this, I want to see an s plus 1, not an s plus 2, okay? So if I go back here, remember, I'm looking for an s plus a or a constant, all right? So I'm going to force it. I'm going to force it. I'm going to say that the, this is the twos left out on the front. This is equal to s plus 1 plus 1 all over s squared plus 1 squared. All right, and then I'm going to clean that up, and I'm going to separate those. And that's going to be 2s plus 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 over, I'm um, oh, sorry, 2 times 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 1 squared. Now, we recognize both of these. This is going to be 2e to the minus t because of the a right here. And this one's going to be a cosine because of the s plus a. Let me go back to the um, table. The, sorry. The, yeah, this is going to be a cosine of 1t. So cosine of uh, 1t. So just t. And this one is going to be, again, 2e to the minus t. But because of the omega here, it's the same as this omega, I'm going to have a sine of t. Okay, so that gives us our final f of s, which is equal to, um, or I should say f of t. We've now done the inverse. So, well, let me write it out. f of s equals a over s plus 2 plus, and I had 2 s plus 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 1 squared. And by the tables, okay, I can drop that down to f of t equals, sorry, a was, uh, I think a was 1. Uh, f of t is equal to e to the minus 2t plus 2 e to the minus t cosine of t plus 2e to the minus t sine of t. Okay, so that's it. That's it for complex conjugate pairs. You just go through that process and um, and get it into these two forms if you have complex conjugate pairs. Um, and of course, the real are uh, the real distinct ones are much easier. All right. So let's look at uh, repeated repeated roots next.